In Denmark, it's windy, very windy. So much so, in fact, that theoretically Denmark could cover its entire energy consumption using offshore wind power. The unexploited potential is more than 200 times bigger than the capacity of the wind turbines we have offshore today. In Denmark, wind power is the renewable energy source with the largest unexploited potential. In the long term, it's Denmark's goal to be independent of fossil fuels, such as coal, oil and natural gas. Building society on renewable energy provides us with greater security of supply, more green jobs and a better climate because we become less dependent on energy imports from faraway countries. Green technology offers jobs and export potential. And more renewable energy will reduce our carbon emissions and in this way help to slow down global warming and climate change. So, how does wind power from the many wind turbines end up as electricity in Danish outlets? This is the story of electricity's journey from offshore wind turbines to consumers. Wind is an abundant renewable energy source. Today, wind power covers approximately 20% of Danish power consumption. This is a world record. No other country integrates that much wind power into its power system. This wind power is generated by more than 5,000 wind turbines, most of them onshore. In the next 10 years, wind power production is expected to more than double, so by 2020, close to half of Denmark's power consumption will be covered by wind energy. Only some wind turbines will be installed onshore, whereas the number of offshore wind turbines will increase drastically. In 10 years, one-third of the wind power is expected to come from offshore wind turbines. Even today, Denmark has several offshore wind farms. The largest ones are placed at Horns Reef near Esbjerg and at Rolf Sand, south of Lolland. The Danish Parliament decides where the offshore wind farms should be built. But areas where it is possible to install more than 20 new offshore wind farms in the waters around Denmark have already been investigated and pointed out. The goal is to primarily base Danish power consumption on wind power. By spreading the offshore wind farms around Danish waters, a more stable supply is secured as the wind doesn't hit all the wind turbines at the same time. When the wind changes direction or subsides on the west coast, it will probably be windy on the east coast. By locating offshore wind farms in different places, consideration is given to navigation, fishery and raw material extraction. One of the world's largest offshore wind farms is to be built between Jewersland and the island of Anholt. With a capacity of 400 megawatts, it will be twice the size of the largest wind farms in Denmark. Connecting an offshore wind farm to the power system is a very extensive task. Yes, I am. Fint. Today we will see some of the challenges there are when we will cross Djursland with cables that come from. It involves a lot of authorities, organizations, and also the general public. There are two possibilities: either we will go through the forest, or else we will go south of the forest. Usually, it takes five years to plan, construct, and connect the offshore wind farm to the existing power system. The offshore wind farm will then supply Danes with wind power for at least 25 years. Before getting started on installing the offshore wind turbines and the system that transmits the power ashore, a wide range of technical, financial and environmental investigations have to be made. This includes collecting a large amount of data on wind conditions, seabed, waves, landscape, flora and fauna. Then follows a great deal of work analyzing the data and adapting the project to the existing conditions. In addition, surveys are made of seabed and soil conditions, buildings, archaeology and cultural history. 
The authorities have to critically assess the investigations to make sure the project can be properly executed. Og de ting, de skal så indgå i kommunens kommuneplantillæg. Then it's time to involve the general public. Jeg vil gerne byde velkommen til borgermødet om tilslutning af Anholt Havvindmøllepark. Public consultations on the project are held in order to give neighbors, citizens, environmental organizations and other interested parties a chance to influence the project. Og hvorfor er det så, at kabel lige præcis skal i land ved Grenå? Der kunne der være mange andre steder langs med kysten. Det vi så nord for Djursland, det var, at der er nogle naturområder ude i havet, som gør det selvfølgelig muligt at bygge anlægget. Man kan søge om dispensation til at lægge kabel. Men det vil være meget, meget vanskeligt at komme bagefter og reparere det, hvis det gik i stykker. Based on the investigations and comments from the public hearings, the Environmental and Regional Planning Committee decides whether or not to approve the project. At the same time, through open tendering, a company has to be found to build and operate the offshore wind farm. Furthermore, a transformer platform has to be built offshore to collect the power from the wind turbines. A cable substation will be constructed on the coast, where the submarine cable and the land cable will be connected. The land cable transmits the power to the existing power system via a high voltage substation. It's usually a large energy company that constructs and operates an offshore wind farm, whilst the responsibility for transmitting the power ashore and connecting it to the power system lies with Energinet.dk, an independent public enterprise under the Ministry of Climate and Energy. The largest offshore wind farm in Denmark will be constructed in the Kattegat. This was approved by the Danish Parliament in 2008 so by 2012, the first power will be produced and transmitted ashore at Grano. With its capacity of 400 megawatts, the wind farm will be one of the largest in the world, supplying power to approximately 400,000 households. This production corresponds to approximately 3% of Denmark's total power consumption. However, construction of the offshore wind farm and the system that's to transmit the power ashore may not commence before thorough investigations have been made of waves, wind, seabed, nature and animal life. For the large local population of seals and porpoises will be disturbed during construction, though investigations have shown that they not only return but benefit from the large amounts of food living around the wind turbine foundations. That is to say, the foundations not only create new habitats for animals and plants, but the number and diversity of species increase, which can have a positive effect on the fish in the area. Power from the many offshore wind turbines at Anholt is collected at sea in a substation placed on a large 5,000 ton platform. The substation with its transformer is a heavyweight power unit. The substation transmits huge amounts of power, whilst the transformer's job is to increase the voltage so that the power can be transmitted ashore via a submarine cable for a distance of 26 kilometers onto the mainland. A smaller submarine cable then transmits the power from the transformer platform to Anholt, 28 kilometers away. So, Anholt can now wave goodbye to its diesel power generators and become part of the main Danish power system. With its 26 centimeter diameter, the large submarine cable is the world's thickest. Like the transformer, the cable is a main archery of power. Laying the submarine cable and landing it is a major process. The submarine cable from the offshore wind farm reaches shore north of Grano. A cable substation will be built on land where the submarine cable and the land cable can be connected. From the cable substation, the land cable transmits power 60 kilometers further onto the main power system near Trier, north of Aarhus. The cable will be undergrounded on the entire stretch. In Trier, the land cable is connected to the substation. Here, the voltage is transformed to 400,000 volts and the power is transmitted via the main power system across the entire country. Green wind power. 
from the Anholt offshore wind farm that can now flow to consumers, houses, businesses and institutions, in fact, wherever power is needed. Denmark has an abundance of wind. Wind waiting to be harnessed by building offshore wind farms and transmitting that power ashore and onto the power system to help make Denmark less dependent on fossil fuels, create more green jobs and more green technology exports, thereby reducing carbon emissions and contributing to the slowing down of global warming and climate change. All this by simply exploiting the wind out at sea. Okay,